Welcome back. This video is an introduction to sizers in WX widgets. Specifically, we'll look at the box sizer, which is the simplest and most commonly used sizer. Let's get started. First of all, what is a sizer? A sizer is a container that is responsible for the layout of its children. Different kinds of sizers lay out their children in different ways. Let's begin by creating some controls. I'll create two buttons, button 1 and button 2. Note that we are not positioning the buttons ourselves. A sizer will take care of that for us. I'm also not using a panel here. Don't worry about that for now. I'll cover sizers plus panels at the end. Okay, let's create a box sizer. As you can see, its constructor takes one parameter, the orientation of the sizer. It can be either vertical or horizontal. A vertical box sizer will lay out its children in a column, whereas a horizontal sizer will lay them out in a row. Let's make this size a horizontal. Next, we can add both buttons to the sizer. They are now considered to be children of the sizer. Finally, we'll call the frames set sizer and fit method passing in our sizer. This makes the sizer responsible for the frame's layout. But it also does something else. If I start the application, the world's smallest window shows up. First note that the buttons are laid out in a row because of the horizontal box sizer. Button 1 is on the left because children are added in left to right order. Set sizer and fit also sets both the initial and minimum size of the window equal to the sizer's minimum size. That's why the window is just large enough to fit the two buttons. I can resize the window, but I cannot make it smaller than the minimum size, which is a good thing. To make the initial window size larger than the minimum size, we can call set client size after set sizer and fit. We can either do it here or from on in it in the app class. Now the window has a larger initial size, but the minimum size is unaffected. What if we want a control to have a specific size? Then we can simply pass a size to its constructor as we have done previously. When we specify a size for a control, it becomes the minimum size of the control in most cases. Let's see. The buttons are now larger, but they are still positioned correctly. And if I make the window as small as possible, it's clear that the size we've set is also used as the minimum button size. All right, now let's explore what the sizer is capable of. When we add a control, there are three parameters we can set. Proportion, flag and border, all of which are zero by default. We will cover these parameters one by one. Proportion determines whether the control should stretch to fill any extra available space. Zero means don't stretch, but if we use a positive value, and restart the application, we can see that button 1 now stretches to fill all extra available space. Note that it stretches with the sizer's orientation. 
our button stretches horizontally because the box sizer is horizontal. What if I also set button 2's proportion to 1? Then it will also stretch horizontally. Here both buttons have the same proportion value, which means they share the available space equally. If I set button 1's proportion to 3, then it will stretch to fill 3 quarters of the available space, and button 2 will fill 1 quarter. How much space a child gets is determined by its proportion relative to the sum of proportions. Note also that the minimum size changed to ensure button 1 is always 3 times bigger than button 2. Good. Let's set proportion back to zero for both buttons. The next parameter is flag. Among other things, it can be used to control the child's alignment. Let's pass in a line sensor first. Now button 1 is vertically centered. And if I resize the window, the sizer automatically updates the position of the button, so it keeps the alignment. I can also bottom align the button. Which looks like this. But what happens if I try to right align it? Then we get this error. It does tell us not to panic, but clearly something is wrong. Alignment flags must be opposite of the sizer orientation. For horizontal sizers, we can align vertically, and for vertical sizers, we can align horizontally. Another flag you can use, which is not related to alignment, is expand. it makes the child stretch opposite to the sizer's orientation. So, in our case, the button stretches vertically. A similar flag is shaped. It does the same thing, except it maintains the child's aspect ratio. So, to see its effect, proportion must be positive. Now the button stretches, but it always keeps its aspect ratio. What if we want to add some empty space around the child? That is where borders come in. A border in WX widgets is just empty space. First, we must add a flag which specifies which sites should have a border. Let's start with the left side. The final parameter is the size of the border. So if I set it to 25, the button will have a 25 pixel border on the left side. You can specify multiple sides by combining flags with the binary OR operator. Now the button has a 25 pixel border on both the left and right side. There is also an all flag which contains all four sides. Different types of flags can also be combined using binary OR. So for example, you can use both alignment flags and border flags at the same time. The overload of add we've used here is the old school way of passing parameters to the sizer. The more modern way is to use this overload instead. It takes a sizer flex object. You can then set the parameters using named methods like this.
This approach is a bit more readable and it makes it convenient to reuse the same parameters for multiple children. Now the same set of parameters is shared by both buttons. Note that size of flags are not allocated using new. Alright, I'll get rid of the flags. And then let's say I want a 20 pixel gap between the buttons. We could do that using borders, perhaps by giving button 1 a 10 pixel right border and button 2 a 10 pixel left border. The alternative is to add a so-called spacer between them. We do that by calling the sizers add spacer method and passing in its size in pixels. Now we have a 20 pixel gap between the buttons. There is also an add stretch spacer method. As the name suggests, it adds a spacer which stretches to fill extra available space. The amount it stretches is controlled by the proportion parameter, just like we saw earlier. I'll use the default value, which is 1. Now we have this gap between the buttons, which takes up all extra available space. Remember that alignment flags can only align children in the direction opposite to the sizer's orientation. But with stretch spacers, we can achieve alignment with the sizer's orientation. For example, to center the buttons horizontally, we can add stretch spacers left and right of the buttons. And now the buttons are effectively centered horizontally. Here is an example application using a vertical box sizer. At the top, we have a string array with two options for the radio box below. Then we have a few different types of controls and a box sizer with the vertical orientation. Next is a sizer flex object with alignment set to center horizontal and a 25 pixel border on all four sides. The controls are added to the sizer all using the same size of flex. To center the controls vertically, a stretch spacer is added on the top and bottom. Let's see what it looks like. Because of the vertical sizer, the controls are laid out in a column. And when the window is resized, the layout automatically adapts, of course. But just like the other examples we've seen, I haven't used a panel. There are two downsides to that. The first one is the ugly grey background color, but that can easily be changed. The biggest downside is that we do not have tap traversal. Remember, tap traversal makes it possible to move focus between controls by pressing tap. The reason why I did not use a panel for the examples in this video is because it complicates things a bit. But let me show you how to use a panel with sizers. First, we add a panel to the frame. And make all controls children of the panel. This by itself won't work. If we start the application, an error shows up. We must add the sizer to the panel instead. This almost works, but the window does not respect the sizer's minimum size. The solution is to use set sizer instead of set sizer and fit. And then call the sizer's set size hints method 
passing in the frame. This ensures that the frame is always large enough to encapsulate the contents of the sizer. Now the application behaves as it should, and we also have tab traversal. I hope the sizers concept now makes sense and that you feel confident using box sizers in your own applications. In the next video, we'll take a look at the grid sizer and later in this series, I'll also show you how sizers can be combined to form more complex layouts. Thank you for watching.